Yeah, so we're on our for second presentation for the day. Uh, FRBD performance with a queue depth of one and a block size of 4K. And Wido is nice enough to go ahead and give us a, a nice lightning talk presentation here. So Wido, will you please take it away? Yeah, sure. I'll keep it um, uh, brief because this needs is a lightning talk talking about RBD performance with a Q-depth of 1 and a block size of 4K. And so you might be asking yourself, why Q-depth of 1 and 4K block size? Well, what I would say is that, um, from my experience, is that single-thread I.O. latency is very important for many applications. What we, what we do see with benchmarks is people focus on high amounts of bandwidth or large amounts of IOPS, but they simply go multi-threaded with a high uh, uh, Q-depth, and then they can say, well, we reach a million IOPS with Ceph, or we reach two million IOPS. But in the end, if you look at the latency of a single I.O., it could be pretty high. Um, and for example, a PHP web server or a MariaDB database or a Redis cache, when it's flushing to its disk, they're all doing single-threaded I.O., and then the latency of that single-threaded I.O. Uh, starts to matter, um, and that's what you notice. It's how snappy applications feel. It's by using a Q-depth of 1. So all the benchmarking I do with Ceph, almost always I start with Q-depth of 1 block size 4K. Then that's my starting point, and from there I start increasing the Q-depth, increasing the block size, and then we get more information about the performance of the cluster. But it all starts with a Q-depth of 1 and a block size of 4K. So um, low latency Ceph. Well, you should understand that Ceph itself will never provide you the lowest latency possible. That's because Ceph was designed for other things than latency. It was designed for redundancy, scalability, and data safety. If you take a local NVMe and put it in your laptop or your server, it will get a way better latency than Ceph will ever provide you because we need to go over the network, um, over TCP IP, then it goes through the CPU, then the CPU is doing its thing, then the code, of course, which runs in the CPU of Ceph does its thing, and then it writes to three nodes. So keep in mind, we're replicating usually two or three times, and then that ta simply takes time. So writing a block in Ceph will be slower um, than different types of storage. However, redundancy, scalability, and data safety. And I always say, I have never seen Ceph lose data um, because Ceph itself is always something else which happened, you know, uh, um, lots of hardware failing, but Ceph itself just cares about your data. And safety is the second or the third priority, uh, performance is the second or third priority for Ceph. Uh, safety is the number one priority. So, but what can we achieve? What can we get out of Ceph uh, in terms of IOPS? So um, I do benchmarking with FIO. Super simple configuration. We take the IO engine RBD, um, then we use the pool RBD. I have an image there called FIO1. Make sure you run these tests multiple times because you need to like um, uh, pre-populate um, the RBD image by running the test a couple of times. And then you simply say, I have an IO depth of one uh, block size of 4K. And I run the test and then after 60 seconds, it tells me how fast or how low the latency is of the Ceph system. So some hardware setup. I took some Supermicro systems with an AMD Epic um, 16 core CPU. Um, 256 gigabytes of memory, um, four Samsung PM um, SSDs, and then the 100 gigabit networking with Mellanox. Um, now, a few things to mention here is that the main performance gains you're going to get is pinning your CPU um, C state to number to one. That's a kernel parameter. That's uh, it's um, you look it up on Google. You can find how you can tune it and set the performance profile of the CPUs to um, uh, performance. So that means that the CPU will run on its maximum gigahertz as it can run. Uh, I think in this case it's 2.4 gigahertz, um, and then uh, but, the, but then you get the lowest latency from the code possible. 100 gig networking doesn't matter. I had 100 gig here, so that's what we use. But the amount of bandwidth which we're using for this test is a few megabytes per second. It's not. Um, gigabits per second. So 25 gig networking works, 10 works, 10 is slightly slower, but keep this in mind, it's slightly, very slightly slower. Most of the time, Ceph spends in the CPU uh, where the code is running. So the, the C state pinning and the profiling of the CPU matters that much. Matters that much. Software-wise, Ubuntu 8.18.04, uh, Ceph version 15.2.8, and then I turned off all the logging. So debug underscore OSD equals one, debug underscore MS for messaging equals uh, zero, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Turn off all the logging, um, and then we can give it a go. So what can we achieve? 
1364 IOPS, which I was able to uh, get with this hardware. So that's a write latency of um, 0 0.73 milliseconds for a 4K block being written to three nodes um, at the same time. So this includes all the replication, the block which we just written has been written to three different NVMEs in different nodes within one millisecond. That's what we were able to achieve. Um, and I, I you know it, it, that that's a fairly good um, performance if you look from the perspective where Ceph comes from. We replicate over the network. It's a distributed file system which can scale out, um, and we still get a very decent uh, um, uh, performance. Do we want more? Yes, always. So, well, you know, what can the future bring us? Um, the Ceph Crimson project for redesigning the OSD should provide us better latency, although Crimson itself is not focused at the moment at providing lower latency. They're just uh, revisiting the code. Um, in the future, it should provide lower latency. And then we have the RBD persistent writeback cache, which uses a local NVMe inside a hypervisor um, to cache IOs. I tested this with 16.2.4 but it was not stable enough to provide real results which I could present here during this lightning talk. I did see about a performance increase of about 2x, so 3,500 IOPS with a uh, much better write latency. However, that's what I saw um, for now. Um, I'll revisit this in a later stage when um, the code is more stable, uh, but at the moment we need to do is with the 1,364 IOPS which we're able to achieve. Um, so if you wanna get to this, um, Faster CPUs, higher clock CPUs gain you more benefit in terms of latency than more cores. So if you need to invest, go for higher clock CPUs with less cores. So if I go back to the hardware, uh, the reason um, um, this one I chose for a 16 core because this specific um, super micro system can have 10 NVMe, so we have 16 cores on 10 NVMe's. You could also say if there was a CPU with um, a 10 cores, there's none so with eight cores, maybe you can go with eight cores and even higher clock CPUs that will bring down the latency. It will not bring down, um, uh, uh, give you more total IO for the whole cluster because that still um, uh, relies on the amount of cores. So it's a balance. If you're looking for lower latency, you need faster CPUs. If you need more total amount of IO for the system, then you need more CPU cores in the whole cluster. Um, and that was my lightning talk about um, Ceph with low latency RBD. Uh, and if you have any questions, uh, this is where you can find me um, or ask them on the uh, users or uh, dev mailing list because that's where I'll hang out as well. We got four minutes. So if anybody wants to ask questions on the spot right now. I'm more than happy to answer them. I have a quick question. Was RBD cache enabled in this? Uh, no, RBD cache was not enabled because if you look at the RBD cache code, it's it's a right through until flush. So only if a client um, um, sends a flush towards RB, lib RBD, it enables the cache. And if we go back to the FIO uh, configuration, it's, it's, it says a direct equals one. Um, so that means it's not sending any flushes. So all the IO is synchronous, which is being sent by FIO. So no, the RBD cache is not enabled. I, I turned this setting, it's called RBD underscore right through underscore uh, flush. Um, if you set that to false, then it always goes into an RBD um, uh, cache and turned on. And then I think I saw about 10 to 20,000 IOPS, but yeah, then we're just writing stuff into memory of the RBD cache. Cool, thanks. I have a question, this is Dan. Um, well, it, may, it might be for Ilya if Ilya is still online, but yesterday Ilya presented, uh, he mentioned some IOPS improvements on LibRBD, maybe in Quincy. I'm not sure exactly when they're coming, but Ilya, are they going to also improve QDepth1 performance? Or maybe Vito, you know? Well, um, I doubt it because I also did benchmarking with the Rados uh, client. So Rados and then if you set uh, Rados bench, but if you set minus T, so the amount of threats to one, um, then you can write blocks of 4K directly to Rados. And the latency I see with QDEV1, so with a single threat on Rados is about the same as I see with RBD. So I do doubt if this improvement of lib RBD will um, um, lower the latency uh, because I do think we're bound by the OSDs um, and by, you know, TCP IP uh, in general, not by lib RBD. Okay. Yeah, um, I agree probably not for this test uh, because those improvements uh, uh, mostly, you know, cut the fat that we had uh, between lib RBD some of it was in libraries, mostly in 
uh, Libra B because the fat that is in Libratus uh, uh, kind of sort of still there. Um, and uh, where uh, what, what, what those improvements were targeted at uh, is really the O and V me uh, clusters and um, you know fairly high queued up, uh, so probably uh, probably not for this test. Uh, one thing I want to note as far as uh, uh, bio and flushing, uh, recent versions of bio have actually been modified. Uh, the RPD engine uh, within bio will now issue a flush in the beginning of any test just to deal with that setting. Uh, so in the future, you might need a way to, you know, if you want to uh, test without RPD cache enabled, you would need to turn it off uh, in the sem.conf for elsewhere because uh, FIO will issue that single flush at the beginning of the test just to just to tweak that, uh, uh, you know, just, just to uh, move the RBD into the, uh, into the state where it uh, thinks that the client sends flushes. And so it, it will do caching by default. Okay, that, that's good feedback indeed because that will, um, you know, give different results and people might have the ID that they're able to do 20 to 30,000 IOPS with their um, um, with their FIO, but actually it's all cache uh, of libRBD. So are you sure that with direct equals one that it will still send the flushes? I think so. Uh, this was, uh, uh, th 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 we did this to address the discrepancy between uh, FIO and RBD bench demand. Because uh, RBD Bench uh, has been doing this, uh, you know, has behaved this way, where it would uh, possibly uh, send the flush in the beginning of any benchmark uh, for many years now, and uh, Fire wasn't doing this, and we were getting complaints uh, that, you know, uh, uh, here here are my RBD Bench results, and here are my Fire results, uh, and they're vastly uh, different. Uh, and so at, at least the intent of the change was to do it even with uh, direct. Um, but uh, I wasn't involved, so I'm not sure. Uh, it's just something I wanted to bring up. Okay, cool. That's, uh, that's good feedback. Any uh, other questions or comments? Thank you. Yeah, so just as a closing note, I always test, as I said, with the QDEF of one because that tells me the latency. And I, I think that latency is the foundation for most applications, their performance. Um, so I always uh, try uh, to uh, test with that. All right. Thanks, Rita, for the lightning talk. Appreciate You're it. Welcome. Got some good questions in.